Child sexual abuse material, or CSAM, is hiding in places that you may not know to look. As a parent, this is clearly terrifying. Congress is going to investigate, but what are they going to do about it? Uh, today, the Senate will hold a hearing on protecting children, and it, it will include testimony from tech CEOs from Discord, Meta, Snap, TikTok, and X. Our next guest is an expert on this one. She's one of the foremost researchers on the topic. Lynn Shaw is the founder of Lynn's Warriors. The mission statement is ending slavery and sexual exploitation by raising awareness through media and grassroots mobilization advocacy, education, and policy. Thank you so much for joining me on this topic. Well, thank you, Natalie, for wanting to cover what is considered something that a lot of people, especially mainstream media, don't want to talk about, but we must. It's the reality in 2024. Absolutely. In fact, my husband Clayton does a lot of our pieces on this topic, and he said, this one's mine. Why are you taking my beat? And I said, well, I don't want to, I admit, nobody wants to talk about this, right? But there is a purpose in protecting not just my children, but all children. Uh, so today, the Senate Judiciary Committee will hold a hearing on protecting children online. What do you expect from this? Unfortunately, I expect zero. Now, okay. let me clarify that because that sounds very negative. First of all, anything to do with children, CSAM, child sexual abuse material, big tech, not monitoring, not stepping up, not figuring out a way to work with the public. We've been down this road before. We had hearings a little over two years ago. Nothing came out of that, despite all of the testimony, despite all of the experts. So all of a sudden we're doing it again today. That is why I want parents to step up, caregivers, guardians, family members, and in their own homes and communities become that warrior. But Natalie, they need the education. They need to know what's going on. They need to know what's happening online. So that's where I kind of want to put the focus. I will be following up about this congressional hearing. There was also a rally happening at 3 p.m. on Capitol Hill that many of the parents who have lost children and children who've been affected by anything that happened to them, bullying, sextortion, online will all be protesting right outside of that congressional hearing so at least i'm very hopeful and positive in 2024 we're raising more awareness we're bringing more hope more people are understanding what is going on and that is exactly what we want to happen okay but let's pretend that they didn't miss what you think that they are going to miss what is it what's the thing where is this lurking that we might not know First of all, big tech, it's a very easy answer. There's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of money to be made from the eyeballs of our children. There's a lot of money to be made from the traffic our children generate. We do have a mental uh, you know, health crisis among our youth. We do have internet addictions. All of this can be backed up by studies and stats. Okay, parents have to, I believe, if you buy your child a device, and most parents do, right? We know kids 9 to 17 have access to four devices, laptops, phones, computers, gaming. Then you have a duty to understand what's going on on these platforms. You have a duty to understand safety features and filters, and you have a duty to talk to your child open and honestly, I mean, age appropriately, and you have to start young, three years old. I mean, we can't tell anybody there is something called parental autonomy when to buy your child a phone, for instance. But we can suggest if you're going to buy that child a phone, you then must take these precautions. And there are so many great free resources, Natalie, that people just don't know about. So it seems very simple. We have to raise awareness and provide the free resources and open the eyes and not walk away because the devices themselves account for over 75% of trafficking. People don't understand this exploitation trafficking. They really do still think of it as that you know van kidnapping a child. Yeah. Yes, that is happening. But it's really, we've made it so easy for the predators. It's all of the devices. And again, so we have big tech on Capitol Hill today, and they're making a lot of money and they hide behind Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. I probably would too if I'm in their shoes. They act as a billboard. It's not their responsibility to shut things down, to monitor, to babysit, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a very slippery slope because we want to maintain, right, privacy or or we think privacy so how are we going to work with congress and big tech parents families kids and make it all work i don't see that 
real solution. We're not shutting down big tech. I don't want to give up the internet. You don't want to give up the internet. We live in a digital world. It's not going away. How are we going to put safety features and filters on all of this, especially in the wake of AI, which is here? And yeah. that's even more frightening. So we have to start talking about it. Explaining so, to the kids. The kids are so smart, Natalie. Like we have to talk to them. There's nothing embarrassing here. Open and honest communication. So what you're concerned about the most is sort of entrapment of children where they sort of participate in something they think is innocent and then they are led into something more sinister. Um, and a lot of research shows that, you know, they might sort of trust an adult. They don't know it's an adult. Maybe they're participating in what seems innocent. And then it gets increasingly uncomfortable. They feel responsible because they've been talking to someone and all of a sudden they're in a place that they feel like they can't go ask for help. Someone's asking them for pictures they don't want to send, things like that. So you're worried about children being pulled into something, right? Not necessarily people trafficking images and kidnapping children. It's a little bit more, I want to say, subtle than that, right? To be honest, I'm, I'm worried about it all because all I'll it. tell okay. you, I don't have no. I mean, it's a, it's a wheel with a lot of spokes that we have to, it goes around and around. And my fear is, and what happens is people can't handle it. You know, it's dark, it's ugly, it's too much to handle. So they turn it off, they close the door, they close their eyes. What I'm trying to get at is actually, I used to educate a lot of kids. I have now taken this new tactic. I have to educate the adults, the parents, the guardians, the family members, what is going on so they can take that home to the kids. I mean, Natalie, why? We have all the information available. I mean, we have to vet and things like that. We've got all this information online. Why are kids so vulnerable? This this may be another program. You know, why are they falling prey to all of these um, criminals online? Why are they sharing such intimate details? We know a child can be, be groomed, fall into these traps of exchanging nude images or sexual conversation within 24 hours. So why, why is that happening? The biggest underreported thing right now is sextortion. The FBI is constantly putting out alerts. Nobody's paying attention. It is affecting teen boys in particular. Why would a boy kill himself, as an example, a 15-year-old, instead of going to his parents and saying, I exchanged a nude image? Not that any of us like this, right? I work with a lot of schools across the country. The teachers say the kids exchange nude images like, uh, well, I'm dating myself, you know, baseball cards or Pokemon cards, things like that. Why don't we take a deep breath? And, and we have to have that relationship with the kids. Come to me. Okay, so you did that. Now, how are we going to take care of it? That is a crime. And we have so many young men killing themselves instead of talking to the parents because they can't come up with their think, they think a 15 year old boy is the example is, you know, they're talking to a cute 14 year old girl, 15 year old girl. And it turns out to be a guy named Biff, you know, 50 years old who says, okay, well now I want you to do this to yourself and film it or your sibling I, and yeah. film it. And that is where the problem comes in. They kill themselves instead of talking about it. So we have to get at that whole issue of there is no embarrassment. We're gonna take care of this, but the parents have to know again, what are the steps to take? They say to me, I delete the image. No, you don't delete, that is a crime. You have to know to call 911. You have to know to contact cyber tip line. All free resources and they will handle everything for you. You're not gonna get in trouble. So we have, it's so many issues here we have to wake everybody up about. But the number one thing right now is online because once an image is there, I don't care. Kids say to me repeatedly, I deleted it. It is there forever. Somebody yes. else has captured it. It is in that cloud. And so this is what we have to teach, online safety. Right, one of the things I tell my kids, if someone sends you something uncomfortable, you need to tell me, but do not forward it to me because I can't have it. And then I'm in possession of something, right? And then you have sent it, you've disseminated it. So you have to tell me and then tell an adult, but do not disseminate it in any way. And it scares me, like the stupid things my sister and I used to do, like, you know, take a picture where someone's in, you know, go into the bathroom, stupid stuff. Like even that can t constitute nudity. So you can't take pictures of your siblings. You can't participate in this, but it has to be an open conversation, an ongoing conversation. Um, talk to me a little bit about this Taylor Swift connection that we've got right now, because 
the media over the weekend freaked out about some AI images of Taylor Swift and that she was being exploited for things that were deep faked, right? And so nobody knows how to take responsibility for this right now. Uh, nobody knows what to do with it. How can we stop it? What does that promote? Uh, can you comment on that a little bit? Yes, I work with a lot of tech experts and they tell me privately, Lynn, we don't know where this is going, except we think it will go in the direction of bad, evil yeah. as far as AI, AI. So, you know, we have Apple iPhones, the watches on their, I, on their cloud right now, they are allowing the CSAM, this child sexual abuse material. Okay. They announced in 2021, they were going to work with the community for safety, uh, work with, you know, Congress, work with everybody. We're going to start monitoring this. We're going to start, you know, looking, sweeping for these images, take them down automatically, flag. And then lo and behold, I'm laying out the story here. It just disappeared. Everybody was excited. Okay, we still, we have some action from big tech. Maybe the other platforms will follow suit. We'll figure this all out together. Now, Apple stopped it. At the same time, fast forward a few months, Apple announces this huge deal with NFL. Now, I'm just connecting dots myself. I, I don't have any proof of anything. And they announced this $50 million a, deal, uh, a year deal with the NFL. Now, fast forward. We have Taylor Swift. She has the most amazing marketing PR people behind her because she's in my face every single day and I'm not even looking for her. Right. So now we're bringing, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, constantly at these games, she's now going to be at the Super Bowl. Does she, is she aware at all her fans who are mostly children, teens, uh, that Apple, who is sponsoring the Super Bowl halftime show, is behind so much of this child sexual abuse material allowed on their platforms. I think there are a lot of dots to connect here. I think the public needs to be made aware. I think there needs to be some sort of backlash that this is unacceptable. Why is this allowed? Why aren't we talking about it more? Why aren't we saying we will not have any of this enough? There is a war on for our children, okay? So I think Taylor Swift, in our faces every day should be made aware of what's really behind the halftime show and all of her promotion of being at these games and everybody loving it there's a lot to think about here with all of this going on especially in light of her fans are are basically pretty young right and what's interesting is that the conversation right now is so much around censoring people for saying things about COVID or saying things about russia or saying things about ukraine um, and we sort of gloss over what is actually dangerous to say online or show online or participating online. Uh, and so it seems disproportionate, don't you think? It's something you hit the nail on the head because every day I ask the question, how come I can tweet something? It could even be I'm retweeting a story that's vetted from a news source and they'll tell, tell me I am uh, you know, abusing community standards or something, or I can't tweet that. How come they don't any of this child abuse material? How come none of it pretty much is censored, right? I don't understand it. I ask Congress, I ask other organizations I work with, experts in the field, lawyers, nobody has an answer for me, Natalie. Why is this allowed at all? There is no censoring of this material. I can only say, again, the answer of follow the money because it's making so much money for people, for traffickers, and again, you know, all these images online, servers are in other countries. It is hard. There aren't the resources. It's hard to deal the red tape with other countries. How to get at this material, to take it down. So it's just a big mishmash of a mess. But again, to your point, why isn't any of this censored? Mm -hmm. Yet an innocent tweet about a vaccine, you know, I don't like a vaccine, could be censored. Makes no sense. It doesn't. Uh, you mentioned a few free tools that parents can look into. What are those? Two of the best are colleagues of mine. One is called Protect Young Eyes, protectyoungeyes.com. Uh, our good friend, Chris McKenna, he will for you, and it's on the website, protectyoungeyes.com, every single device, he will explain to you how you put the safety features and filters on. He will explain something, Natalie, I wasn't even aware of routers in your home how you can protect yourself with a router. So he's got all that going on, all free information. It is a wonderful, wonderful resource. He will, he will, you can write to him, find it on the website, his email. He will help you for all free. 
Now we go to the second one, Bark, B-A-R-K, like a dog, bark.us. For a small fee, they will monitor text messages, uh, incoming you know, emails, anything with images for you. It's very reasonably priced. For the, for the older kids, it's like $9.99 a month. The younger kids, $4.99. And you will be alerted to something that's not right coming in on that child's phone. So this is another tool, even though it costs a few dollars, I am telling you it is the number one tool to keep you and your kids safe and open it up. And also just general um, awareness of being aware this is going on. Follow, follow Lynn's Warriors. I mean, I named everything Lynn's Warriors. I put out so much free information. Use this toolkit, do this. Here's what's happening. Here's a headline. Just be aware and talk. The number one thing, Natalie, talk to your child, talk to them. So what platforms are you on? Know, know what's on their phone or their laptop. Know how many friends do they have? I mean, you really should only have people you know, right? Not strangers. Yeah. Talk to them. Again, if somebody approaches you or says something you're not sure of, uncomfortable, you have to go to that adult. You have to just start opening up the communication. We have to get back to that. And I also recommend, and it works because we work on it, devices at nighttime are kept out of the bedrooms of children. Yes. No devices. They need their sleep. They stay up all night scrolling, swiping, disturbed. A lot of things happen. And you know what? Get those devices out. The kids report back to us after a little screaming and kicking. They are so much happier when they don't have to deal with all of that. And the parents are happier too. Keep the devices off of the kitchen table, the dinner table, you know, when you're eating. And another simple trick is, you know, just when you're in the car with the kids driving somewhere, have a little conversation just about, you know, online use. But it really begins with starting just those simple little facts. Put down the phones, including the adults. Kids are watching us in the home, okay? Put the yeah, phones clean. all down for 15 minutes because we're, we're, we're all addicted to this. Just show them by example, 15 minutes. But we must get a handle on this because right now the law is lagging behind all of this technology. The predators are winning. Yeah. Um, okay, can I get a little maybe conspiracy? Just I'm just gonna ask this question and see if you have a response to it. Uh, because before I started to read and study these types of things and especially read books on adolescence because I have some, um, I may not have seen it this way, but now I sort of feel like certain political parties have a transhumanistic agenda to ruin the sexuality, sexuality of everybody as a control mechanism. Uh, what's, yeah, what's referred to as transhumanism, just, you know, let's break down all bodily functions and human functions and create droids of human beings that we can control. And I feel like the lip service done to protect children feeds into that. I don't have proof. I just feel it. What can you respond to that? Have I gone too far? What do you think? Well, you could never go too far with any of this. <laughs> and okay. that's number one. Conspiracy to me actually means truth because a lot of conspiracies, we, we, we were told things were conspiracies, fast forward, right? Have proven to be true. So what I'm going to say about it, this is my opinion. There is a war on for children. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody really care about children. It's a shocking statement for me to make. I think they look at them as a commodity. Okay. I, th I think that they want adults and children to be as one. I think they want everybody sitting behind a computer, not going outside, not going to school, not going to work. And this universe and this meta and these bots are going to control everything. And I think that is what they want. Total control, total control. And I don't think you are off at all with what you are saying, because just in the last year, I am seeing Natalie on a daily basis what is going on with children, with the lack of, you know, the parent understanding, with the lack of Congress or elected officials really caring about any of this. Because I ask you, Natalie, with all of this going on, why aren't people out in the streets protesting about all of this? You know, sa uh, safety for kids. Now, again, I have hope today we do have a rally in Washington going on for all of this. But en masse, you know, we're more concerned about Taylor Swift being at the Super Bowl. Can you imagine, which by the way, is one of the biggest trafficking uh, events of the year every year, 
wherever you have large groups of people, they fly in from all over the world. They traffic children, they traffic adults. There's a lot of money to be made. Why is nobody really talking about that? Yeah, sure, there's a little bit talk about it. Be aware, say something, but not enough. There is no, there is a war on and everything is being looked at with the low hanging fruit. But I really think children, they look at perhaps as just like bots. You know, they almost don't exist. They just make us money and we're just gonna keep going for it because there's no accountability. It's, it's very frightening. And the AI on top of all of this is the most frightening thing that keeps me up at night. Yeah. Not to mention this sort of normalization of what they're calling minor attracted persons now, mm -hmm. uh, allowing those people to freely express mm -hmm. themselves as a marginalized group. Don't even get me started with that. So thank you for your perspective very much. This is very eye-opening. Uh, you can follow Lynn Shaw on her YouTube channel. It's Lynn's Warriors, um, or also on X, uh, similar lower third. Just look it up. So thank you again for your time. It was a pleasure to have you on Redacted. Natalie, thank you so much. I want everybody to become a warrior. Community creates change, and we are going to get a handle on all of this. Thank you very much.